This is code.org. Let's see what we're doing. Open the data tab. Familiarize with yourself with the import table. Open the data visualizer. Make charts of average hour of sleep. Favorite subject. Okay, so data tab. Oh, good. We already have student info. So familiarize yourself with the import tape, imported table. Yep, student info. Open the data visualizer. So let me go ahead and click on student info like it just did. And here's our data visualizer or visualize data. And what did it say here? We need to make an average hour of sleep chart. So this is a really handy tool. We can just click and it's going to create the chart on its own. And so average. And let's keep in mind our document here as well, our activity guide. That we will also need to fill out. So interesting. I wonder if that's a bar chart. Oh, wow, that's low. That's weird that they did a word here. Huh. Okay. What if we did it like this? That's not going to be great. Oh. Doesn't want us to do that. Okay. What if we try a scatter plot? Nope. Not much works with that. Oh, <laughs> okay. So that's average hours of sleep. And then it said favorite subject, favorite subject. Oh, wow. Wow. Go math. Yeah. Is computers. Yep. Computer science is on here. Cool. Okay. Lunch. Ugh. I roll. And so what is this data set? Oh, yeah. Oh, they did this on purpose. So it looks like just some information collected by students at a particular school or something of the sort. Interesting. All right. So with your partner, hello, partner. What problems came up when trying to create these charts? Well, for example, when I did the, like, you guys even saw this, average hours of sleep, a bar chart, great. But what if we do a histogram? It's not even going to let us. So, and I let's wonder why that is. Average hours of sleep. I wonder if it's because this data set right here, that's not numeric. And so a histogram wouldn't be able to work with that. So that's an issue that came up. What else came up? Um, well, then when we did favorite subject, so it's interesting to see what they consider a subject here. Also, notice someone said CS and then computer science. Isn't that the same, right? Or if they abbreviate something, it's uh, it's going to separate it all out. And then we can even get into details like what does science mean? And then biology, shouldn't that be part of science? So I see some issues there as well. Clean the data manually. Oh, goodness. Okay. Manually update cells with messy data so it's consistent with other cells. So I'm not going to go through all of this because you need to figure it out. But like I said, one of them had a word six in it. So I'm actually going to see if I can find that. Oh, look. And obviously, we don't want this word here. We want it to be numeric. So you just click edit and two because everything else is an actual number. I'm going to go through this and that's average hours of entertainment. So we didn't see that issue, but it would still be an issue. Let's take a look at six now. So let's do visualizer and now we can do average hours of sleep and boom, we got rid of that word. I wonder then if we can do a average hours of sleep histogram now because it's all numeric at this point. We can change our bucket size. Okay, that's neat. And then what were some of the issues with this? Well, remember computer science and some said CS, I believe. That's going to be a problem because I would think those are the same. History, math, science, art, science. Oh, and then capital letters are even going to matter because that's not going to be counted the same. At least I don't. Let's see if they actually did that. Oop, they might be organizing capital letters the same, but still you want the cleanliness. You want the uniformity within your data. Uh, and here we are, CS, computer, yikes, science, boom. Why is my letter P? I'm having issues with my keyboard, but that's fine. Okay, save. There we are. So now it matches. So now let's look at the data. 
and that small CS category is gone. Yeah, so you want to continue through and check for inconsistencies like bi biology and things of like that. Make the original charts again. Do your charts match others in the class? Why or why not? So hopefully that once you are done cleaning up this data, if you check with partners in class, it would match, right? Because does history make sense separate than this? So go through and make sure that your charts have or that your data has consistent information throughout each category. All right, let's keep going. So once you're done with your chart, filter data in both the female state legislator, legislators and U.S. women running for elected office in 2020 tables using the activity guide. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so let's go do this. Filter female state legislators data set for a year by the year you were born. Okay, so let's head back here. Female state legislatures, legislators. And keep in mind with the word filter, we have filtered data before, right? We filtered data with code using for statements and conditionals or ifs, checking and getting data of a particular sort, maybe from a certain year and things like this. There's software though, like the data visualizer or programs that allow you to do that as well in a visual sense. So I'm gonna do this by the year I was born. And it says female state legislatures. And I'm just going to do, let's see. Sure, total and a bar graph. And then I can filter it by the year I was born. And I was born way back in 1987 because I'm an old man. So what this is showing then is each le state legislator that had women in it in 1987. So it says female Senate total and then the count, right? And so if I go here, it's showing the all the way down, 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 down. It shows those that in 1987 had women in that office. Okay. Now let's keep in mind our boom. All right. So we did that. Create a histogram of percentages of female in the legislator. Choose a bucket size of five. Copy and paste. Okay. So. Oh, cool. And so with my filter, right, a histogram, keep in mind, we don't want any gaps. And it's going to show us how this is changing. So the percentage of the legislator that was women and how many that women were actually represented by that. Cool. OK, so and we want to copy and paste this. So let's view a snapshot. And again, yours will look different. This is from 1987 for me. You're probably not an old man. Like my students, you're not allowed to say that. Um, all right, great. Now let's see. Filter the female state legislators data set by year. 2009, copy and paste and answer the questions. Uh, 2019, okay. And so filter by year. All right, and once again, we can do view snapshot copy and boop, boop, paste. Right click paste, and we have a few questions. If you were born, how many states had 20 in the year you were born? How many states had 20 to 30 percent legislators made up of females? Female legislators. So keep in mind, this will be different for you. So make sure you put in your year for this graph. And you can see here, you're just looking for count how many states one, two, three states had that many women in their legislature. So that's what I would say for mine. And in 2019, how many states had between 25 and 30%? And this one's likely more. Oh, nope, between 25 and 30%. And you can tell here, you just want to look at your chart. So, and make sure you filtered by year. What is, does this show? What is this showing? This should be obvious. And what might that be the case? Why might that be the case? So what they're saying here is compare kind of the data from then to now. And yours is going to look different, but then to now. And then what is it showing you? Just state what you see there and why that might be. All right, let's see what's else. what else. Fill to the U.S. women running for elected office in 2020 data set to answer the following. The chart type is up to you. Paste the chart below. Which states had at least one woman run for governor? Oh, cool. Okay. 
This is kind of interesting. So I'll start with bar because honestly, I'm not sure. And oh, we need to actually switch though to US when running for elected office. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, visualize. And I'll start with a bar and we'll do. Oh, so this one's tricky. You really want to think about it. What do we want to do? Which state had at least one governor? So my default would be to go to office. But if I look at office, this shows me the offices, right? And this shows me account. That's not really helpful. And I could try to filter, but how am I going to get states? So I need to know which had at least one woman, one woman run for governor. So I want to make sure to see states here. So let me go ahead and do states. And now this is just going to be the general count, right? It's going to go through this bar. It's going to go through our data and grab just every woman that's running. And that's what this count is. How many women are actually running in the state? Now, since we know we have access to these states, we can go ahead and filter this. Ooh, this is a toughie. So we want to filter by office. And then what office? Governor. Okay. And that one's a bit more complicated, but here we go. We get this nice chart. I like that they put 0.5. Yeah, you have 0.5 person running. Um, view and copy and chart. Right click, paste. And then you want to analyze this. Which state had at least answer? So take a look at your chart. Oh, apparently I didn't copy mine. Oh, it's taking a second. So I'm just going to right click and do copy image because I'm impatient. Paste. There we are. And now I could answer that question. Which state had at least had more than 10 women win their primary race? And so it's really important that you can be able to sort and understand the data that we have access to. So we need a state that had more than 10. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at bar chart for now. So if you win a primary race, let me take off our filter. Let's see what data it's going to put out. So when I would assume we might want to clean up the data a bit to do this, especially since the WD seems to only be one or two candidates, and we can probably change it to something that is more logical. I'll leave this as is for now, but I recommend thinking about cleaning it up. But primary win loss, and then what do we need state? Ooh, okay. Well, then again, I'm not seeing states around here. So let me try this. Let me do state first. Now I have a list of states. Let's see if I can do primary. And then let's look at wins. And now we have more of a clear picture of which state had a woman win in a primary view snapshot and copy image. So I can put my chart here. And then I can answer that question. So being able to sort and interpret data is critical. All right, let's see what we else we have on this one. Run and finish. Yep. What makes manually cleaning data? Yeah. So why would this be frustrating? And make sure you're putting your own answer, but I do want to think through it with you like a partner, right? So what could make this so frustrating? Well, think about it. Let me go back because I would probably want to clean up this data some as well. Let's take a look at it. Boom. And US women running for elected office, for instance. So I don't know what WD means. That doesn't make complete sense to me. And I know it's in here somewhere. In fact, I'm going to do control F to do a search WD. Let's see if this works. Yeah. So what might that mean? WD? Well, it says lost primary. So probably I would just want to edit this to be in L, right? Because that is more clear. So what's really frustrating about having to scroll through and hit search and then have to deal with multiple different things that are really close. You want to think about how much work you really must do to be able to edit the data. So my answer would have something to do with that. Think about how much scrolling, searching slash hunting for cells to change. Think about multiple different values meaning the same thing that's the stuff you want to hit upon because that makes data less useful if it's not easy to read when it really is or should be interpreted as the same data points all right onward